at this. Oh, it's oh, oh, a jumper. <laughs> Double. Oh. <laughs> There's one. Got him. That a boy. Little jumper. If <laughs> it's a small boat, it's big. Oh, look at the oh, size of it. Oh my god. This is one of those days we're having that we all dream of. The Fish in Canada show, brought to you in part by Prince Craft Boats, the spirit of boating. Garmin, plot your paradise, reel them in. And Ontario Canada, in partnership with Destination Ontario. Hi, everyone. Now, normally our shows are well planned months ahead of time. But today, we're going to take you on a last-minute Fishing Canada shoot. It's one of those spur-of-the-moment things where you just kind of say, let's just go do this. And today's This is targeting smallmouth bass on the St. Lawrence River, arguably the best smallmouth bass river in the world, a place very near and dear to our hearts. The reason for this last-minute shoot? Well, we're already in the area-ish, sort of, and there's no way that Pete and I are gonna turn down an opportunity at targeting this gorgeous smallmouth oasis. I mean, let's be honest. If you were towing your rig full of gear past a world-class fishery, could you resist the temptation? Eh, we didn't think so. The area on the river we're targeting today is Lake St. Francis. It's bordered by southeastern Ontario, southwestern Quebec, and northern New York State. Some of our fondest memories have come from here including our now famous less than one hour double haul of 50 pound plus muskies. A feat will likely never duplicate. <laughs> Woo. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's Angelo, big, that's that your is. biggest muskie ever. Oh, for sure, without question. Oh, bud, look oh, at that fish. God. What a gorgeous muskie. Woo. Look at you. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> as far as fishing for smallmouth bass here, We've done some tournaments as well as some primo television shoots in the past. We definitely have some history. With that said, today we'll be fishing a totally new area and we've only got one unscheduled day to try and get a smallie show done. So we thought it might be a good idea to confer with our good buddy and local fishing legend, Ryan Flero. And after some good intel, it's on. Fishing for bass, it's not first nature to me. I'm a walleye fisherman. That's my, predominantly, that's what I understand, that's what I enjoy, and that's my passion. Bass fishing just fell into place for my walleye spots. We're getting, when we're guiding, when we're fishing, we're getting lots of bass. So I was always catching the bass. From there, it just kind of got me a little bit hooked. Our first stop is a mid-river, or in this case, mid-lake, rise in the bottom. We should note here that even though this portion of the river is classed as a lake, it still has a constant, strong current. A rise or drop in the bottom contour is a perfect place for smallies to set up on and wait for food to flow their way. We see it as their ambush or hunting areas. Once we find that contour and position our boat for the perfect drift, we know it's gonna be a good day. You got one, buddy. Yeah. Right feels off the hop. Feels good. Oh, coming up, coming up. <laughs> Go back down, thank you. Got one too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Now what do we do? Oh, that's a jumper. <laughs> now what do we do? Oh my god! Off. No way. Yeah. <laughs> the good thing is now he's pulling all the way down. <laughs> Look at. They come up and then they go down. They come up and then they go down. He's just going out. That's a good fish. Yeah, he looks like about a four pounder, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. There he comes. There he is. There you go. Oh. Nice one, buddy. Look at Big how fat fatty. That guy is. Big Ooh. fatty. Not even that huge. Not, like he's no, he's not as strong. He's not as big as I thought, but just fat. Strong as heck. Typical smallmouth, right? Just typical smallmouth bass. Look at how fat that fish is. <laughs> oh my god. We get a four or five pounder, we're gonna get beat up bad. That's probably close to four right there. That I'd thing. say so. He's just a shorty. I'd say so. Nice. See you, bud. One of the simplest forms of, of fishing, as far as I'm concerned, and most effective, and that is drop shotting. Oh, yeah. As simple as it gets. Weight on the bottom, bait just up off the bottom. You can 
tie this at various distances from the bottom, and those fish that are cruising just off the bottom are going to see this before they'll get spooked by that. Double. Oh. oh. <laughs> There's one. Got him. That a boy. Little jumper. As I touched on a second ago, drop shotting has become our most effective method of hooking into these current-related smallies. We've tried tubes and craws and Carolina rigs and all kinds of crazy stuff, but day in and day out, drop shotting really is the deal here. He's on. He's on. Double. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> yeah, this guy's small. It's a little. No, I got a totally light one, and you got a dark one. Huh? Fat. Look how fat he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they are eating. Even the little guys are eating like crazy. Little chubby. I don't want him to break. Yeah, he's got a decent ah. gut to him. How nice is that? For a change. Set himself in the top lip. Look at the guts on these fish. Yeah, they're just filling right up. Because tiny, like the length of them is nothing, but and that and it between the weight and the just the way a smallmouth is built, they're fighting like crazy. And the current, of course. They're, they're just fighting like crazy. Our main setups are either straight eight-pound test Yozuri fluorocarbon line to the hook and weight, or 10-pound test braid to an eight-pound test leader. We typically use a number four or six drop shot hook and a three eighths to one half ounce cylindrical drop shot weight. This setup is perfect for heavy current. Not a big one, he's already up. I don't think is he's he? very big yet. Little guy, look at this thing. <laughs> it's a he's three, one of our, solid three. He's one of our little ones. Solid three. Get him out, bud. Nice. So that's what you'd call a little guy in this school, oh. believe it or not. As uh, beefy as that guy is, he's very, you know, not very long. 16 inch fish or something like that, but 15 inch fish, but lots of gut. See you, buddy, thanks for the fight. Tough guy. They release so nice too. Straight down. There's one. Got him. That a boy. Coming up. Yeah, he just had it up to come to the surface, and then he said, nah, maybe not. This is one of those days we're having that we all dream of, you and us. We dream of days like this. Oh, yeah. We dream of it. And we're experiencing it right now. We're experiencing it with you. Incredible. Here he comes. Oh, oh, look at the size of that fish. thing. Oh, oh, oh. What are that? Oh, that's come on, one. baby. That's a good one. A biggie. <sighs> Big fat fish, eh? They're so fat, it's so ah. awesome. Coming at you, buddy. I got you. Ah, oh, what a nice looking oh. fish. What a great sight. Clean water. He's swimming upstream now. Yeah. Coming at you. Got him. <laughs> got him. Oh, look at that thing. Look, that look is. at that thing. That's a block. <laughs> That's a block. Wow. Good job, buddy. Oh, and you, you see us, it looks like we're, we're wimping out here fighting these, these fish. There's just, nothing you can do about it. It's current, right? The current yeah. is just... Current and a small old bass. The two together are, well, yeah, are pretty much that. incredible. There we go. Isn't that gorgeous? We are sitting on top of possibly the biggest school of these that we have ever experienced in our lives. Maybe there's been one or two other times in the past where we could see these big schools of smallies but not as tight as this. This is incredible. We're gonna tell you a little bit about it as the show progresses here, but right now we need to catch some more of them. Okay, go on under. I'll see if I can grab one of them. That was the best. <laughs> little jumper. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
tiny. You can get a mixture of all sizes. Little guys, fat, they're all full. They're all right full of food. Still fun no matter how big they are. <laughs> it's a small boat. It's big. What do we got? Quick. Whoa. As usual, <laughs> it'll be a while. Oh, look at the oh size. Oh my of god. We're using two different drift fishing methods today while trying to stay on top of the school of smallies. The first is to bring our boat directly up current of the fish and then drift our baits through the school with near vertical presentations. This works great until the fish get spooky because of the boat and become weary. If the fish do get spooked, then we position ourselves 20 to 30 feet away from the school, hit anchor mode on our trolling motor to hold us in position, and then cast out and drift our baits past the fish much like trout fishing in a creek or river. Both methods are extremely efficient. What do we got? Quick. Whoa! Look at the work that this rod is doing. <laughs> like, there's no way, no way that you could do this with anything other than just the perfect drop shot rod. But look at the bend, perfect yeah. curve in that. You need, like, a normal, you, you could use a medium light. Yeah. If you, otherwise, you'd have like yeah. a seven foot medium light to be a good yeah. rod to do this with too. So you get a nice fast tip on it, but you need that medium at least at the backbone section. But drop shot rods are perfect for this stuff because they're just like you see in what Anza's rod there. It's just bending all that first third is bending and then the rest is just backbone. Because of these big fish, because of small mo. Come on, not that He's big not either. That, big. that is you kick weird. Your butt. Eh? That's your forearm being sore for the last two days. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting weak on yeah, this, buddy. Yeah, he's got... Oh! Whoa! Look at that. That's musky stuff right there. Either Holy. that or a disease. Is it... Look at that. What is that? That is... Boy, it's dog-eat-dog dog down there, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Even those that? big walters. That's... Oh, yeah, it's a gouge. That's a, that's a gouge. Sure, yeah. that's, look oh, at look. that. Ooh! I ain't touching that. <laughs> I didn't ask you to. <laughs> That's Woo. crazy. That's it's a tough guy. world down there, man. Tough world. I'm assuming musky and pike would be the ones, musky more than anything, nice. right, would be yeah. the ones that would do that because just the way they're... You don't think a big walleye would I don't think take so. a like piece a of that? that? A smallie that big? Yeah, that's I don't true. Know. Let me know, buddy. I'm still tying up. So. Retie, buddy. <laughs> As usual, it'll be a while. <laughs> don't forget there's walleye in here too, apparently, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's lots of walleye in this place. You never know. This guy feels pretty small esque though. It? Yeah, just the way he's pulling, bulldogging. So we're doing two different techniques here. We're doing going up and drifting down with the current and the wind. Wind is at a perfect dead angle and speed today. And we're also on, um, on anchor lock with the garment with the force. And we're, let, we're drifting almost like we we're river fishing uh, for, like, for trout. We're throwing it up there and just letting it kind of work its way down as long as it's moving down close to the current speed. And uh, and they're both working. It's a big walleye, I is think. Is it a big walleye? Oh, he's long. oh, it is walleye. Yes, look at this thing. Holy nice one, bud. Smoke. Ooh, what you a call bonus. it, brother. What a bonus. Did you call that. Here he what comes. What a bonus. Holy, Holy mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> You're a genius, brother. <laughs> You're a freaking genius. Let me get that out right here. Look at the marks on this fish. This is a huge walleye. Now that walleye. Massive. Folks. <laughs> Wow, that is a biggie. That's that. crazy. Oh. That's crazy right there. Love it. All those teeth, all of those predators, <laughs> all in one hole. Yeah, no kidding, eh? See you, buddy. Boom. Powered <laughs> down. That's so awesome. I called it. The minute he went up river, that kind of yeah. yeah, gave and it no away. No jumps whatsoever. No right? jump. Moving up river. Oh, yeah, that's a Walter. That's fun, man. We we're having some fun today, bro. Oh, that feels like a heavy fish from here, from here, right? Eh? <laughs> but they're so, they're built so tough, right? Yeah. They're built like little blocks. Yeah. Here it comes. Oh, he just about jumped. Wow, you think he'd jump? Some of them jump. It's weird. Smallmouth are weird. Some jump and some won't. They'll just, they'll make, we'll probably get a jump out of this guy, but. Seems to be a real bulldogger. And I was just, I was just, I cast up and I just lift, lift make sure it was just drifting Bouncing, down. Yeah. yeah. Like a small mo compared to a large mo. Ooh. Yeah, he's 
under the boat. There, there's a totally different fight. I mean, a smallmouth is much tougher. A largemouth will pull and sort of bulldog, but nothing like this. I think they give up easier, too. I got him right? here, Ranch. He's a biggie. He's a biggie. A good one. Wait till you see this guy. Nice. Oh, oh, oh. nice fish. Boy, that's, a, that's a real that's biggie. That's a fiver. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Fiver and a And then some, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wow. Wow is right. Amazing. Right in the lip, top lip. Perfect hookup. Look at that, folks. Oh, my. Oh, what a small What mouth. a monster. What a small mouth. Gorgeous fish. Beautiful. Man. What's nice about this Fight. is that we're out in a really open area, and there's no worries about these fish running alongside of a ridge or, you know, breaking your line off on stumps or, or rocks or anything. Just a big weed line, and we're just drifting, basically drifting our baits down beside it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the fish are swimming out of the weeds and into the open water, which is fantastic. Yeah. Nice bonus. Yeah, yeah. And there's there's deep water. There's all kinds of deep water all around. I mean, that's typical, especially, well, all I think all year, as soon as they're done their spawn, they start working towards deeper water. You catch small, these shallow all the time. And these fish are semi-shallow, but but there's always a or close, you know, access to the deeper water, you know, way out there, sort of thing. We found the spot, bud. Ooh. We found the spot. This hot spot is a large underwater rise in beautiful Lake St. Francis along the mighty St. Lawrence River. The waypoint on your screen puts you right there. This is a very typical smallmouth bass area where the fish sit at the front of or on the shallower portion of a depth change and wait for passing prey. The smallies here aren't picky and will usually hit most well-placed presentations. Early in the day worked best for us. We ran drop shot rigs with small three and a half to four inch finesse plastics with three eighths to half ounce drop shot weights. To fish this hotspot effectively, we started up current and drifted down. Once we found the fish, we anchored our Garmin trolling motor and then cast up current and let our presentation slowly drift downstream. A natural presentation is key here. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. Now, I don't know if the audience can see the bend in that rod. Oh, there you go. Well, over you go, my darling. There you go. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh, look at the oh, size of it. Oh, my God. After a fish like Pete's last one, we'd normally say, well, it's going to be hard to top that. I mean, let's be honest, a five pound smallie on light tackle, it gets no better than that, right? Normally, we'd agree with that. However, we did not expect what was about to unfold. Oh, oh boy. Oh, they are well, so now. tough, eh? Well, now, here, go by me. They are so tough. Holy smokes. Even the little ones. Yeah, is that a little one? Like, I don't think it's, well. Can't tell? It's hard to tell, eh? No, I don't know if the audience can see the bend in that rod. Oh. What, the bend in Anza's rod? See how that works? <laughs> That's a drop shot rod, so he's got lots of tip action. It's really softest tip, but a lot of backbone on the back end. Oh, if you're gonna buy smokes. a drop shot specific rod. Buddy, this thing is. That's what they do. A lot of weight. A lot of weight. I mean, a lot of weight. We got a giant. Keep away from that motor. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. He's just in the wrong place. There you go. Swim out. That's it. There you go. Over you go, my darling. There you go. Wow. Either we got a giant on or I'm just totally whipping out here, but holy man. What is going on here? Yeah. Look at this thing. It's just raw weight now. Yeah. No, now he's moving. Oh. I can. Uh, yeah, I think you need back to back up. Let me just mark. I think it. you try and back up a little bit on him, Pete, so I can get. I'm gonna drop a waypoint right a, here. Of an angle. Oh, that's a big fish. Holy mackerel! I just want to get a peek at it, to be honest with you, because I'm curious now if that's a small mouth. So I'm starting to. And he came up so quick and hurt yeah, his flash. Yeah, exactly. That's, that was the freaky part. That's what bothers Maybe me. Maybe you got a muskie that ate a smallie. I'm thinking this, oh. this is, it does not feel like the norm. <laughs> if it's a small mouth, it's big. That's all I got to say. 
Or like you said, you know, maybe he hung himself up and maybe got himself by the tail, giving him a lot more Rack. strength, although it doesn't feel tail. Get as shallow as enough we can see. I gotta see, we're gonna see a great big muskie with a small mouth in his mouth. Oh, baby, <laughs> that'd be the best. <laughs> big old 50 incher. There it is right there. It's wrapped or something. It's no, it's a musky. It's got a musky at your bass. It is. Oh, I told it's you. a musky on my this. bass. Oh, look at the oh, size of it. Oh my god. Oh, he let it go. Nope. Yeah, he, he let, let it, go. it go. Look at this, folks. Oh I told my you. god, did you I see told that? You. That was a big 50-inch musky. Look what he did to the bass. He killed it. Holy smokes. No, he's still there. Oh, look at this poor fish. Wow. That was an incredible scene that you and I just witnessed. Oh. A big muskie. I saw that muskie, folks. That muskie was, see this net from handle to tip? It was huge. It was like that. <laughs> it was that long. It was a tank. And look what he did to this poor smallmouth. Oh, man. Now, that fish will survive. Oh, yeah, you he'll know be what I mean? fine. We can, we can they... take him back and give him to somebody to eat, too, but I think he'll... Oh, he'll survive it. We'll try that and go. If not, yeah. we'll pick him up with the net. Yeah, let's see what he does. Well, he wasn't doing the fighting. It was the musky. No, he's gone. See, he's already he's gone. He took he out. Was, that, that fish, as soon as he hit, yeah. that fish stopped fighting because the musky hit yeah. him immediately. He came up that surface. He just bit a tail, a little tail switch. That's it. That's went it. down, and that musky must have nailed him on the way down. <laughs> yeah. We've had pike before on walleye. Never We've never musky. had a musky on a smallie. That was huge. Oh, buddy. That, that thing was giant. Was down that far. Like, he was down in 12, uh, eight feet of water. You could see. You could see it. He was it. that long. He was fat. <laughs> oh, 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 my God. You can imagine, folks, a, a fish that eats fish like that. I mean, you know what I mean? Normally, you're talking about minnows to gobies to whatever. That guy eats walleye and smallmouth and whatever else he can get, so. That, my friends, was a thrill. Getting There, brought to you by the Outdoor Journal Radio Podcast Network. To get to today's excellent smallmouth bass fishing, we first drove east on Highway 401 to exit 814 at the town of Lancaster. We then followed County Road 2 until we arrived at Max Marina on the shores of Lake St. Francis. Please take note of a couple of points here. First, there's a lot of current in the middle section of Franny. Expect to be using your trolling motor quite a bit. Second, this water can turn nasty in a hurry if big winds are predicted. Please plan with caution. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Yozuri Fishing Lures, fish the best. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Closed captioning for this episode is brought to you by FishingCanada.com, the gateway to your next fishing adventure. Come on.